Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here, general manager at DeMarcoSports.com. We've got another college football Saturday for you. Last Saturday, 4-1 and one with the complimentary plays. Entering the weekend, I'm on a 67-46 and 46 roll with the plays I'm giving away here for free. The most recent football one being Thursday night when I told you the best way to play the Vikings-Eagles game was to play Philadelphia and the over in a two-team teaser. How easy was that? I've got three freebies for this Saturday card coming up in just a moment. A quick reminder, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, you may want to do so. It's the best way to find out when I will have the daily reports available to you. And a quick reminder, unlike a lot of guys that do these video reports, I have nothing to sell you. I will never be soliciting you. The only time you will get a notification is by subscribing here and getting an alert when the video report is available, so subscribe now. Okay, guys, I just want to be upfront with you. This college football card this Saturday sucks. There is very little quality on the card. Last week, there were probably a half a dozen games I considered using. This week, these games suck. The matchups suck. There is few games that I was even interested in, but one, but one. And I'm just going to tell you quickly up front, two Saturdays ago, I had the 30th ever 30 dime release of my 22 career, 22 year career since I created these sites. And it was a winner as Tennessee took care of business at home against Virginia. Well, today I had the 31st ever 30 dime play of my career. It matches the biggest play of my career in any sport. In fact, I just had one in the NFL this past Sunday, the 17th ever 30 dime release in the NFL. And it was a winner with Jacksonville. Oh God, it was a sweat, but it was a win. Taking care of business at Indianapolis. I've got another one today. It is my double digit blowout of the month. And this one is going to be the biggest blowout, I believe, on this entire Saturday card. If you're watching this video, the game has not yet started. And just like the winner on Jacksonville, just like the winner on Tennessee, you can get it for half price simply by using the coupon code WARE, R-A-R-E, because I've always been a believer that you never had to spend big money to make big money. After all, this is gambling. This is what we do for fun. It's how we get our recreational thrill, the vicarious thrill that we get from gambling is why we do it. And again, you don't have to spend a fortune to make big money. That's why it's the half price play of the day over at DeMarcoSports.com. Now, with all that being said, it's time to get to some complimentary plays. And again, guys, just keep this in mind. There is not a lot of quality here, but let's start with the big game in the SEC as far as I'm concerned, and it's Tennessee going to Florida. And you know that Tennessee had lost five in a row and 16 of 17 before winning in Rocky Top last year, 38 to 33. But now, can the Vols snap their losing streak in the Swamp, where they have lost nine straight? Their last win in the Swamp, oh, 2003. But after that, 49-13 uh, win over Virginia again, a 30-dime release by yours truly. What did they lose last week? Oh, they looked lethargic against Austin P. No, it's not Austin Pay, it's Austin P. Uh, 30 to 13. But remember, there was an extended weather delay. They were only up 13 to 6 at the half. The defense played well, seven sacks. But Joe Milton, once again, the questions arose is he the guy to replace Hooker at quarterback? Because he did not have a great game. He has a big arm, but didn't have a good game. I say it was simply a case of the look ahead and the letdown. Two things that always affect college teams and you have to always be aware of when handicapping. Do you really think, coming off the big win against Virginia, right? Do you really think the volunteers were going, oh my God, we gotta really be concerned because we're laying 117 points against Austin P. Can we cover this damn game? Or do you think they were looking ahead to this game in the swamp? Let's be serious, guys. Florida, I mean, did you watch the game at Utah? Did you see anything that gave you any inclination that the Gators can do anything offensively with Graham Mertz at quarterback? Oh, yeah, he had 193 yards passing when they beat McNeese State 49-17. to I'll say this again, and I say this so many times. You, me, and nine other guys could beat McNeese State, okay? They look pathetic against Utah, and Utah didn't have its starting quarterback, if you may remember, in that 24-11 to win. Florida's defense 
is certainly more than acceptable. But I will take this ten, six and a half points with Tennessee, and I will go with the volunteers here because, as I always like to say, streaks are meant to be broken. Now, your next play is going to be a teaser. And as I said on Thursday night, teasers are not sucker bets. Parlays are. Teasers are not if you know how to play them. And the teaser I'm looking here, the first half, I like Louisville at Lucas Oil Stadium. It's not a Bloomington against Indiana. Uh, geez, Jeff Brown beating Indiana. Hmm, did he do that a few times with Purdue? He sure the hell did. Five straight wins with the Boilermakers over the Hoosiers. Four and one against the spread. Kicked Tom Allen's ass in every single one of them. Outscored them 174 to 112. Why is this important? Because he's got better athletes probably in Louisville than he did with Purdue. Artificial turf, speed plays to Louisville's advantage here. I was impressed with the way Louisville opened up at Georgia Tech where they fell down 28 to 13 and a half and came back and won that game 39-34. Of course, they took care of business easily against Murray State 56 to nothing last week. Indiana lost 23-3 at home to Ohio State in its opener, uh, then won over uh, Indiana State, an FCS team, 41-7. The big thing there, though, however, to note is that the Hoosiers changed quarterbacks. They went with uh, Taven Jackson. Uh, he got the offense rolling, 18-21 of 21 for 236 yards. But in this particular spot, I think Louisville will be able to run the ball with abandon. Jake Plummer, who came from Purdue with Jeff Rahm, you know, he's thrown for 494 yards in two games with only four touchdowns and three interceptions, so he's prone to the miscue. But again, in a two-team seven-point teaser, indoors, I only need Louisville to win this game by three. So you're saying, okay, Al, now who are you going to hook this game up with? I'll tell you what, I'm going to hook it up with LSU. LSU is currently a nine-and-a-half-point favorite at Mississippi State. Uh, do I like LSU minus nine and a half? A little. Do I love LSU minus two and a half? You better bet your, well, we can't say that, but yes, I do. Love LSU minus two and a half. Listen, uh, Jaden Daniels has help now in the backfield. Logan Diggs, a Notre Dame transfer, made his debut last week. Yeah, it was against Grambling. Okay, but 15 carries, 115 yards. But the backfield is going to get healthier because John Emery Jr. and Armani Goodwin are both expected to make their debuts as well. So the Tigers are going to be able to move the ball both through the air and on the ground against Mississippi State. Mississippi State, as you know, is transitioning. It's not so much about the air raid attack anymore um, because Mike Leach's successor was their former defensive coordinator, uh, Zach Arnett. He wants to run the ball more. Well, they certainly didn't run the ball well against Arizona, a game in which they were up 14 0 and had to hold on for the 31 24 win in overtime last week. They only averaged 3.7 yards per carry. I just think LSU is the more talented team. And listen, Brian Kelly, you didn't pay him the big bucks to start off one and two. So LSU minus the two and a half in the two team adjusted price teaser, along with Louisville minus. The three. That's the teaser. I like that. And the other thing I like about the Louisville-Indiana game, I cannot believe that game is at 50 and a half points. I think both teams are going to score in the high 20s, if not both topping 30. Love that game to go over the price of 50 and a half. So those are your three plays. And ranking them, I have to be honest with you, I like the teaser number one. I know a lot of you don't like teasers, but I'm telling you, I like the teaser number one. Louisville and LSU would be the first choice. Uh, the next play would then be LSU, and then your total with Louisville and Indiana going over. Uh, one thing before I talk about one other game. You see there the two-day free all-access pass. It used to say one day. I've changed it. You now have a choice. If you'd like to get today's plays, which include mine, big play, over at demarcosports.com, you can get it for free if you've never used All Access Pass before. The regular price is $109 today. And you can choose a second day for free as well, a bonus day, and the choice is yours. So if you've never taken advantage of the All Access Pass before, it's free, no strings attached. And I've done it for years, over, over 16 years now, because it's the best way to let you get a taste of what we're doing at the site and get a sampling of all the handicappers' best bets for free because there ain't nothing better that beats free, guys. So check it out, the free all-access pass over at demarcosports.com. Now two days. It's actually been two days for a while, but I forgot to tell you. Oh, well. But 
what are they going to do, fire me? I run the damn site. It's in my name. Uh, the other game I was looking at, and I just want to talk about very briefly, Penn State, 14 and a half at noon. Penn State opened up, got the win and cover at home against West Virginia, 38-15. And then they beat a cupcake in Delaware, 63-7. Uh, to 7. A revenge game for them. The last time they played was two seasons ago, and they lost at home 20-18 in that nine-overtime disaster. They're going to Illinois. Now, Illinois is not the team that the Illini were a year ago because they had lost so much to the NFL and to transfers and graduation um, on defense. Uh, this is a team that was trailing 34-7 to at Kansas last week and ultimately lost 34-23, but they were never in the game. Their defense allowed 539 yards. They beat Toledo in their home opener, having to come back and score in the final minute to win it 30-28. to Penn State is going to be able to run the ball on them just like Kansas did. Penn State's quarterback has looked pretty damn good in his first two starts. I think Penn State minus 14 and a half. You could also consider Penn State in that teaser with Louisville and or LSU. Now, I'm not encouraging a three-team teaser here by any uh, stretch of the imagination. But, you know, Penn State is a team that I thought about playing straight up as well here. Cincinnati is another team. Um, I told you I used Cincinnati last week. They went to Pittsburgh. They won the game outright as a six-and-a-half-point home dog, a road dog. They're a 14-point choice today at home against Miami of Ohio, a series they have dominated. Now, Miami of Ohio opened the season 38-3 loss at Miami of Florida, then won against UMass. Big effing deal, 41-28. to Cincinnati is only a 14-point choice at home. You could easily put the Bearcats in here, and I like Cincinnati even more than Penn State. So easily, I could throw in Cincinnati at home instead of Louisville and hook them up with LSU. Yes, I still like Louisville and LSU, but Cincinnati could be an alternate choice there as well. I don't know if Cincinnati can cover the 14 points, but that's why I'm just throwing that out there because I handicapped the game. I like Cincinnati and a teaser possibility as well. So that'll do it, guys. I wish you well, and we'll talk to you again on uh, Sunday when we do this all for the NFL. Good luck, everybody.